Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Malar. I am 28 years old. I am a tech entrepreneur and I am a professional badminton player. Uh, today, they have called me here, the whole TED team has called me here to talk about my journey and also um, share my learnings as such. Uh, what I really want to do today is not talk about my journey more, but I like to talk also about something which I'm sure a lot of people sitting here would be able to relate to. Uh, that particular journey is basically growing up in an Indian middle class family. Can I have with a raise of hands people who have grown, grown up in an Indian middle class family? Yeah, a lot of people. I, that's particularly what I've assumed as well. So uh, there were a couple of people. So all right, but yeah. Uh, so one common mistake that I've always seen that a lot of people who have this particular background end up doing is they always think on the aspects of uh, getting those basic things and the basic necessities in life, which primarily are called sort of roti kapra makan, right? But, uh, and they never actually think about only of shooting for the stars in whatever field they are doing. This I primarily feel is like a big, big mistake. And that's why uh, after talking to and going through journeys about a lot of uh, successful people who have come from this particular background, I have been able to coin this particular term which I call something as a non-mistake, right? So what do you mean by a non-mistake or what do you mean, what is this particular term about? Uh, this particularly means that uh, events or incidents in someone's life, which most of the people tend to ignore them and not do anything about it, but there are some bit of this 0.1% people who actually act on it and that basic, basically becomes a life-changing journey or a life-changing event for all of these people who decide to act on it. So before all the people who spoke here before, they have gone through such journeys, they have taken their non-mistakes seriously, and that's how they are where they are, right? So to give you just an analogy, Apple was falling on everyone's head, but it was just about Newton who gave it a thought. And today, we understand gravity because of that particular thought and some emphasis given on the existing fact. So this is what particularly means like a non-mistake is, right? Today, I want to talk about my three non-mistakes in my life, which led me to, do, to doing what I'm doing today. Maybe someday I'll ask Chetan Bhagat to actually write a book about it and even a movie. But anyways, so talking about my first non-mistake, we, I'll take you back to, a, uh, to 2001, when I had just finished my first standard, and me and my elder brother during the summer holidays ended up watching around four, five, six uh, as such uh, hours of television, and I'm sure all the 90s kids would be able to relate to this thing. I can, I can even, if you ask me after the talk, I can even tell you what was the sequence of the shows that were coming across, right? But the whole point is that with this, my mother got super annoyed that we are spending a lot of time watching television. First of all, we were no, no, nothing doing productive. And second of all, it was like affecting our eyes as well. But more importantly, she figured out that there's a, a place which is less than a kilometer away, which offers badminton coaching near uh, to our house. And she was like, what's the harm? Let's get these guys enrolled. Next day, we went up there and she got us enrolled to the badminton coaching uh, center there. So uh, how many of you guys have played badminton in your life? All right, great. A lot of people. So I, the, there will be a lot of people who will be able to relate to this. So uh, what I particularly feel is like, like a game of badminton is like a compressed version of everyone's lives. You have your ups and downs. You have good rallies. You win. You do a lot of effort. You win those good rallies. There are some unfortunate times when you, even after doing a lot of effort, you didn't end up winning that rally because maybe the person in front of you was really uh, good at what the person actually does and playing. So there are these ups and downs as such. Most important thing which I relate to with my life and a game of badminton is, you always, after the end of a good rally, a good point, a bad point, you have a fresh start when the new rally begins in. Same goes for life. Even if you have a bad day or a good day, you go to an extreme high to an extreme low, every day is a fresh start which every one of us can take. Uh, it was one fine day, my father had come to pick me up uh, at the coaching center itself. And my, all of a sudden, my coach came across and said that, uh, 
I guess Malar should go and uh, start playing for the national championships and enroll for the national championships. This was almost two years into me starting playing badminton. I was about like playing some district level uh, badminton itself. My father, to my surprise, actually said, yes, that makes a lot of sense. Let's take Malar to the national championships. And I was in the sense of shock. And that's the reason why I couldn't react to that conversation. But on my way home, I asked my father, why did you say yes? Why do you think that I should possibly go and apply to a, and uh, maybe enroll to a national championships? My father said, what's the problem? You lose here, you lose there. And all of a sudden, there was a good enough logic assigned to it. And I like, this makes a lot of sense, so let's do it. Uh, we ended up going to a different city to play the national championships as well. I got there and I got to know that I enrolled for the qualifiers of the national championship. It wasn't even the actual tournament itself. I, when I got there, I understood that, uh, so I've, I've, I've actually played the first match and I lost my first match itself. I was sitting disappointed and I was like really, really uh, disappointed out, sitting out, outside of the court. That's when my father came and my father spoke with me and he said, this is the reason I wanted you to come and actually play this national championship. Because if you don't know where you have to go, and you can only know that if you actually play with the best and you actually have to be in that particular zone where you know that this is what it looks like at the top of the hill. And that is how I understood that I need to not think about what I'm doing at during my regular practice session, but need to always think about where I'm supposed to go. And that has to be a very high enough aim. I came back uh, from that particular day, and I decided that I want to not aim for a smaller thing of playing a district tournament. I want to aim for a larger set, which is like playing for the nationals. Uh, to my surprise, again, a lot of things after that, me taking the decision, started to change. My school, who was not initially supportive of me uh, playing a lot of, lot of badminton, they all of a sudden allowed me to bunk the last three classes every day so that I can go and practice my uh, coaching for badminton. A lot of my co-students uh, gave in extra hours so that I can again do my own practice as such. Uh, that everything together put down on a uh, fast forward to two years, I was not only playing the district and the state level championship and I was winning there, I was actually one of the uh, regulars in the national championships as well. And this time, I'm not talking about the qualifiers. I was actually playing the national championships uh, as such. This particularly gave me a lot of confidence. And I take back to that particular decision of playing and losing the first match of the qualifiers. This is where that I got that thought process and a change of mindset, which led me to going from where I was to where I uh, could be. And this is uh, like me playing the national championship, couple of sn snippets of the newspaper cuttings. Coming to my second non-mistake uh, of my life, uh, this is basically when I entered my 10th standard. And I'm sure uh, everyone here would be able to relate to that. All of a sudden, when you enter 10th standard, everyone starts talking about the pressure of board exams coming in. And all the relatives, all family members talking about how's, uh, how are the studies, uh, how is the exam coming across, and everything. So I had to take a tough call at that time, which was that, do I want to pursue badminton as a career, or do I want to focus on my studies? It was difficult, because I was a decent enough student, even in studies, and I was doing pretty fairly well in terms of badminton as well. So uh, amongst that decision, one of the things that happened was I came last in the tuition test that happened in the, at the end of the ninth standard. And my parents were called by a tuition teacher just to update them that this is what has happened. So they got a little scared that is this guy going to perform anywhere because he was doing fairly OK in badminton. And all of a sudden, he has fallen down in his studies and such. I know that it is in me that I can do both of these things together. And I told them that I'm going to play badminton till the entire season is over. And after that, I'm going to focus on my studies and study for the board exams. I Starting from May, June till October, I played badminton uh, rigorously. I played all the tournaments. Uh, that ended up being one of the most successful years in my badminton career. I ended up in one the Indian junior squad for the 2010 Commonwealth Games uh, as such.
This happened till October. From October to the board exams in March, I left everything. Only thing that I focused on was I wanted to study for the board exams and I wanted to prove myself that I can do both. So the learnings that happened across was on the fronts of uh, me deciding that I want to do both. Again, uh, initially when I wanted to do a choice that I can do this or I can do that was something that is in my head. That day when I decided that I want to pursue both was something the mindset changed because of which I was able to achieve both. Uh, coming to the third uh, non-mistake of my life, fast forwarding things to 2016. 2016 was the time when I graduated from my engineering college. I came to Bangalore for the first time. I started doing my job uh, here in Bangalore. Uh, all the things that I've imagined that I'll be doing, uh, I'll be working hard, I'll be performing well in my job, went into a turmoil because I had a lot of free time. Uh, my job was typically going to office at 12 and coming back by 4. Uh, I, I had a lot of free time and I really wanted to explore things uh, during that time, which I knew that there are a lot of things out there which, I, which, which, which are unexplored as of now. So uh, with this free time, I start, started attending a lot of events, seminars, webinars, uh, meetups as such in Bangalore. Uh, one of those meetups I distinctly remember, I ended up meet, uh, meeting one of the persons uh, who was a person who was just selected under the Forbes 30 under 30 list. I, at that time, I still remember during that meetup itself, I googled what is it. I got to know that this is something very, very interesting that they select only 30 people under the age of 30 who have achieved something in their particular career. I was really fascinated. I, I, have, uh, I ended up having a conversation with this person after the uh, meetup uh, ended and there was like a, uh, like a dinner going on. This guy came and told me that one thing that changed his life as such was that he decided that all the things that he wanted to achieve in life was something that he'll keep reminding himself of those things every day, every, uh, every day in, day out. On that front, on that day, I, that thing which he mentioned, that actually stuck with me. I came back home uh, where I was living with my friends uh, such. I came back home and I decided there are a lot of things that I want to achieve. But if I keep a note and I keep a track of all the things and I keep reminding them myself, that will be too confusing. Let's start with just one simple thing. As I was already fascinated about the entire Forbes 30 under 30 uh, thing that has come across, I, on that day, I had put a reminder on my personal calendar. And since I started a corporate job, all of a sudden, calendars became a really, really important thing. right? So this is a screenshot of my calendar back in October 2016. So the day was 13th October uh, 2016, wherein I kept a reminder of 30 under 30, believe in yourself, for myself for every day, 10 to 11 PM. This is something I didn't know what I was going to do to get that. I didn't know. I had no clue how, it, how things are going to shape across in the coming years, when, when and how I'm going to achieve this ever in my life. right? So, but things started to slowly, slowly adapt. Because of this one small thing, a uh, couple of days later, I got selected into this train journey, which is called Jagriti Yatra. This entire train journey is like they select 450 individuals amongst a lot of applications, thousands of applications across India. And they take you guys on an 800 kilometer train journey across India to meet successful entrepreneurs who have done and made an impact in their life. It could be social entrepreneurship or it could be uh, something different as well. That thing actually stuck with me because I remember how I got to this particular journey as well. Uh, it was a 15 day train journey, right? And I started just started my corporate job. All of a sudden, when I went to my boss asking a leave for 15 days, he denied it, saying that that's not possible. That is something we cannot do. Imagine the fact that there was no work, still he denied it, but I cannot do anything. So I came back home. I uh, decided that's OK, fine. If he's saying no, I might not even consider maybe something different I'll do. This doesn't make sense to go against what the boss is saying. I don't know what happened. Next day, maybe the last night I saw this as a reminder. Next day, uh, in my office, I went to my boss with one, my resignation letter in my hand. 
and I told him, either I resign or you grant me the leave. He, my, he ended up granting me the leave for those 15 days and I went to this particular event of Jagrit Yatra, which was a life-changing experience for me. Again, fast-forwarding things, uh, something very different happened, which I never thought uh, I would have been able to do was, uh, in 2019, I decided that I want to leave my salary job and I want to take the plunge with two of my college friends into getting into a startup and working uh, and start working on an idea. It was just an idea. We knew nothing about entrepreneurship at that time. The, the ecosystem also was not that developed as such. And we were clueless about how to do that. But that one small bit of confidence was that let's figure it out. And we ended up taking the plunge and getting into our first uh, startup. That was 2019. I still remember that uh, we were going on two wheelers for almost 50, 60 kilometers every day. Uh, we ended up like around nine people staying in that uh, in, in a two BHK apartment in Mumbai. It was a, a lot of struggle. Again, that journey started last year and it has been something very, very inspiring for me as well. Something that also came across this year was on 26th May 2022, I got this email from the Forbes team that we three founders have been selected under the Forbes 30 under 30 Asia list. I still remember I had a shed of tear in my eyes after reading this email because it was not about those small uh, getting into entrepreneurship or just starting up a startup. It was about the journey of those six and a half years that I put that reminder and I actually was able to achieve that. It took me six and a half years, but that is something which I want to I wanna thank a lot of people who have helped me in my journey. But important thing is that one small thing can get you to a large, large distance. It's just about taking that small plunge. This is something which I want to def definitely mention because I have seen this happening in my life multiple times on those three non-mistakes that I mentioned. There are a couple of other incidents uh, as well. But this is something which is a, a life-changing rule that I particularly follow that why not shoot for the stars and aim for the stars and not think about something just getting a roti kapra makan. I, with this thought that I'll leave you guys to it that you guys can think about if, if you're achieving or planning to achieve something in your life, don't think for the X, shoot for the 10X. And I'll guarantee you it'll take the same amount of time, energy, and effort. Think about it. And thank you so much.